Welcome to Shamba Shepa Uganda. We are traveling all over Uganda to find hard working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to make their farms more productive and adapt to climate change. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice and turn their farms around into a profitable business while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmer's experience on the Shamba Shape Up Uganda! Uganda. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up Uganda. Today we're on a journey to explore some of the challenges our farmers face and the smart solutions they use to adapt to the changing climate. Come with us as we learn about the stories of strength, clever ideas and teamwork that are shaping our response to climate change. Hmm. After you. Thank you. Today we are setting off on a special journey to meet three amazing farmers. Our first stop is in Chituba village in Mkono district. Here we are meeting Johnson Kawenyera, a 39-year-old volleyball coach turned full-time farmer. Let's dive into his story as he takes us through his family farm. On the farm, they grow bananas, maize, coffee and beans. Even though Johnson is new to farming and faces challenges, it hasn't stopped him from chasing his big dreams. Uh, hello, Mr. Hello. Johnson. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. Hello. Good. How are you doing? Good. Thank yeah. you. What is this you're doing? I was trimming my tree. Mm. You know, this is a, a fruit tree. And uh -huh. besides that, it's also medicinal. Hey. Yeah. So do you have other fruit trees or you're, you're selective? Uh, of course, there are other fruit trees. There are mangoes, mm. there are oranges, and then there is also the lemons. Uh, what other enterprise do you have? Uh, of course, we have uh, the cows, the goats, mm. chicken, and then uh, the beans. So ah. the beans are all incorporated in the coffee, bananas? Yes, uh, you like and the, the maize. You like the mm. beans? <laughs> the beans are like tail over. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. What, are, what are the challenges with the beans? Uh, the beans, of course, uh, it depends on the weather, mm. plus the insecticides and mm. so on. For example, we planted early. Now, when we planted early, mm. the rain is still on, we are harvesting, and there are a lot of mm. spoiled beans within. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. You don't have to worry, Johnson, because mm. we don't come alone. Mm. We come with experts that are going to give you all the knowledge and help that you need. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Mm. Yeah. But let us first go and call them, mm -hmm. then we'll come back. So. Okay. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the story of Jack and the Beanstalk? He planted magic beans and they grew so tall, he climbed them and went into the world of giants. <sighs> These will never be giants. They need help. And I know just the person who can help. Hmm. Johnson hoped for a great harvest, but the rain didn't cooperate, and his beans didn't grow as planned. Changing the weather pattern is making farming tough for Johnson and other farmers. That's why we've got Wilbur from Naro to help. He'll show us the right time and way to plant beans, plus the best kind for where you live. Uh, as I was going through that, that field. Wilbur went on to say that beans are attacked by pests like bean pod borers. These can be identified by holes on the pods and diseases like anthracnose. You have to use good seed, you know, mm -hmm. a quality seed. Mm -hmm. A quality seed is obtained from certified seed companies that produce good seed, okay? Then uh, uh, you can also spray, you know, of course you, you can't have zero disease or pest. <laughs> you, can, you can spray at certain, uh, uh, Interval. certain Interval. intervals, yes. Uh, for example, at flowering, when they are putting the, the pods, you can spray a bit. Mm. Otherwise, there are many uh, pests which disturb those, those bees and mm. cause yield losses. Mm. And uh, secondly, uh, that stage mm. of beans has uh, coincided with a time when rainfall is too much, which shouldn't have been the case. Oh, okay. Okay? So that means that uh, our planting was not uh, timely done. The timely planting. Okay. Uh, it wasn't timely done. Uh, now, before the season, we, we do forecasts. We get information about how we, when we start 
uh, raining. raining, how much rainfall will it be, okay? Mm. Uh, then uh, thirdly, uh, the, the, the planting itself mm. was not done well. The spacing is not, is not good, so we are going to demonstrate to see how should we space beans. With weather and affecting regions differently, Wilbur went on to provide guidance on where to plant each variety of the narrow bean in Uganda. Narrow bean 1, 2 and 3 are recommended for cultivation in the western, eastern and central regions. Narrow bean 4C and 5C, which are climbing varieties, grow well in the mountainous regions of Mbale, Kabale, and Renzori. Narrow bean 6 and 7 are best suited for drier regions and are known to grow well in the northern region. Mr. Wilbur told us this is the right type of seed to plant and the rainy season is coming. So, let's plant. When preparing the land, dig the manure into the soil a month before planting. This allows the manure to add organic matter early. Space the rows 50 centimeters apart and dig the fallows. After making the shallow fallows, apply dry compost manure or fertilizer. Use 50 kilograms of fertilizer per acre. Cover fertilizer lightly with a thin layer of soil, then place the beans 10 centimeters apart. Measuring with a stick, cover well with soil. A farmer with small seeded varieties needs 20 kilograms, medium seeded varieties about 25 kilograms, and large seeded about 30 kilograms per acre. All this with good farming practices, proper spacing, weeding, pest and disease management, one can harvest between 8 to 12 bags of 90 kilograms. We are set. We are, so we are finished planting mm -hmm. uh, within about five days. Five? The beans will, yes, five. Five days. Five, six days. The beans will be germinating. And ready to eat. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> then uh, we, we go now into weeding, maintaining them weed free and until maturity. Thank you. Okay. Even though Johnson did have a good harvest last time, I believe he can succeed by paying attention to the weather he can handle the challenges caused by climate change. A lot of farmers in Uganda now are doing something called mixed farming. It's simple. They grow different crops and raise their animals together on their farms. Want to boost your income and adapt to climate changes? Chicken farming is the way to go. It's not just about money. It improves nutrition too. Our next stop, Irene Kasilivu's farm. She's got a few birds left, but they are not at their best. Still, she's determined to keep raising broilers. Guess what? Chigongo Hassan from Kenchik is tipping in with some advice. Can't wait to see Irene's farm transform. Hassan, mm -hmm. yes, what yes. have you observed? Um, wow, it's a very nice farm. Mm -hmm. Yes, a very nice farm. Thanks for the good job. Well done. It's mm -hmm. a pleasure. Yeah. So how old are they? On Friday, they are making six weeks. Six weeks, mm. okay. Yes. In fact, these were the smallest oh. because most of them so were big ones were taken They were slaughter. taken, yeah. Okay. Mm. What do you think is the weight of these birds? At five weeks, yes. I weighed and they were one and like a quarter kilo. Mm, according to my observation, they're a bit underweight. And I also observed uh, something. I don't know if you, if you had seen this. Uh, we had a sick bird here, right here, okay? Mm. Yes, I found its legs uh, spread apart, you know. Mm. So now, usually, I don't know, if you give it food, does it eat? If you put food there? It has taken, I think, some two days yes, without, without eating. eating. Mm. Okay, now, um, I, I think that's why it's smaller than the others. Yes. But usually, such a condition is usually a deficiency problem. So, at a, at a point one or two, it was lacking some minerals or vitamins or even some other micro mm. elements. So, we always have to supplement our broilers with vitamins, at least every three days in a week. Okay. So that, the, yeah, so that it can strengthen their bones and other processes in the body. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, Hassan, yes, I you're saying this is a deficiency, not a disease. Uh, it's a deficiency, and a disease. we have deficiency diseases, okay, ah. from the nutrition bit of it. Yes. So what are those diseases that affect broiler birds? Mm. Diseases that disturb us mostly in broilers. We have Newcastle uh, disease. Yes, usually sea birds are like having uh, having a lot of mucus, you know, having cough, mm. and they bring out green diarrhea. 
usually that's in your castle, eh? Mm. So now, Gumboro usually receive a bad chilled, as if they are feeling cold, even if they are five weeks, mm. they will feel, even if it's shining, they will feel cold, and they bring out that white diarrhea. Okay. And they are dying in numbers. So Gumboro okay? is always white diarrhea? Yes, Newcastle white diarrhea. is green. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Then, then we usually have a coccidiosis. Mm -hmm. Coccidiosis disturbs green. farmers, the mm. brown, whenever you see the brown, brown. diarrhea, yes, yes. that's coccidiosis. Oh. Okay? We should have other respiratory infections, okay? You see birds wheezing, you know, birds having a lot of mucus in the mouth, birds coughing. So basically, those are the most disturbing diseases. Mm. And are they preventable? Yes, you can always prevent these, uh, these infections. Mm -hmm. One, by proper hygiene. Yes. Your bicycle should be on point. Mm -hmm. Two is by vaccination, mm -hmm. okay? You make sure you follow the schedule mm -hmm. given to you by Kenchi and vaccinate them, then, go, then you won't get any problem wow, with Wow, okay. Yes, with viral infections especially. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So what makes Kenchik especially yes. different and special? Kenchik can never go wrong. Mm. Our birds come pre-vaccinated mm -hmm. against Gumboro. Yes. Our broilers against Gumboro, Newcastle disease, mm. and infectious bronchitis all at once. Wow. So now by the time the bird reaches your farm, it it's has enough prevent, immunity. Yes, you can never lose such numbers. Okay, 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 okay. Then two, two with Kenchik, we always visit. Mm. We have a team of vets mm. to always visit your farm, advise you, and it's at free of charge. Oh. They don't charge even a single Thank coin all so over much. the country. <laughs> yes, all over the country. Mm. Then three, our birds, they are disease resistant, especially if all factors are constant, good hygiene, good feed and everything, they don't easily get sick, mm. okay? Mm. Now what happens is that even if they get sick, whenever you give treatment, mm. they always respond quickly. That is it. Other than other bees. That's why I told you about mm. the breed. Mm. Mm. Yes, and you are lucky today, Madam Irene. Yes, please. We have a surprise for you as Ken Chick. Do you have a brooder? Obviously, I have a brood. Yeah, perfect. We have a surprise <laughs> Where for you. Is the what brood is the surprise? We have a surprise for you. Lead us to your brood, then I will show you your <laughs> surprise. <laughs> okay, this is the room oh, where we brood okay. from. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Hassan. Yes. This is it. What do you think? Mm -hmm. This is very nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. We just need to polish a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To make a good brooder for chicks, first, clean the room well and fumigate with a disinfectant. Then create a circular brooder using plywood. This helps keep them warm and avoids corners that could cause crowding. Put clean husks with newspapers so that the chicks can see and eat food easily. Add clean feeders, drinkers and a heat source because chicks need warmth. Now, the chicks can happily move into their new home and grow comfortably. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up Uganda. We have learned how to plant beans using smart farming techniques to get most beans from Johnson's farm. We have also seen how to identify, treat, and prevent diseases in Irene's broiler chickens. But wait, there is more, because there is a double scoop of farming wisdom coming your way. We will be visiting our old friends, Daudi and Joweria, to learn how to make compost for their farm. And if that's not enough, we are teaming up with Johnson to guide him on how to grow fruit trees on his farm. Joweria is waiting for us. Hey, let's go, let's yes. go, let's go. <laughs> Both Daudi and Joweria have discovered the key to happy soil, and their coffee and banana harvests are thanking them. Now we're teaming up with Robin and Agai from Naro to learn the art of composting. Get ready to uncover the secrets to healthy soil. How have you been managing this uh, dung? What I do, mm. I heap it here from my clan, okay. then I take it in the garden. Madam Robina, I can see you smiling. <laughs> Is it a good thing? Are we practicing the right thing? Generally, it's not ideal. Mm. Okay. Because as you look at it, you, you heap it here. Mm. First of all, it's not hygienic. A lot of flies will be coming. Okay. and gathering around here, which is not healthy to your home. At the same time, it is direct the sun, oh. that at times it evaporates and some of the nutrients 
evaporates away. Okay. Even at the same time, when it rains, yes. water will just take all the nutrients, especially the nitrogen. And at the same time, when you take it as fr fresh as it is, mm. you may take it with a lot of heat, where it can end up burning your crops. Oh. We have the best way of doing this. Okay. And I think we can make a, a compost uh -huh. and uh, try to decompose it in a, a pit, uh -huh. which is an ideal method. So, Madam Robina, do you have a place that we can use or you've observed that we can use? Yes, yes. I think I, I can show you where, we, where, where and how we are going to do it. Okay, you go with Daudi. Now I'm going to get Joeria and Karis. We need manpower. Okay. okay. Joeria and I ran as fast as we could, but still found when the team had already begun. These are different organic material which we, we are supposed to use. Oh. And as you look at, you look at them, mm. they are all different colors. Okay, yes. We have this brown portion where we have dry matter, they, they provide us with a lot of carbon. Mm. When you go to those green ones, you will find that they give us more of nitrogen. Mm. You will see that in the material we have ash, there you will get some good calcium. But when you look at the other real manure, yes. it will provide, uh, provide us with the phosphate, and at the same time, it will give us bacteria oh. which will break the whole All break this. down the whole system and we get a full compost mm. type of manure but mm. before you set that compost there are some critical issues you are supposed to know the weed is it is supposed to be 150 centimeter mm. when you go down it is supposed to be between 45 to 30 centimeter. Now, as you can see, these are different materials. Yes. When we are laying them down, we lay them in layers. Mm -hmm. So we have to begin with this type. If you have maize stalks, mm. the better. Okay. They will come at the bottom such that they can allow drainage. That oh. is, excess water will be running through and going down. Okay. So from there, you go to the brown material. You see, we have this as brown. You can even use banana leaves as brown mm -hmm. or tree dried, bra leaves. Uh, dried leaves. Okay. You put this, this layer of this okay. brown and on top of them, you can put also Wood. wood shaving. Oh. Then you put it in a layer. Okay. After putting those in a layer, you use a watering can mm -hmm. and you smear some water in it. Then we bring our manure. Mm -hmm. Then afterwards, you bring your ash, mm -hmm. this ash. Yes. Then the last layer you are putting on top. Mm. Plants, Plants with the broad leaf, so long Before as it is pumpkin. green. Mm. So this one will provide nitrogen, which will enrich mm. our compost. After sealing, you will get a long st a stick and you press it down. When you press it down, it will be a measure to see whether your pit has developed heat inside. Oh. Because when you pull it out, mm. you will test it and you will see that it is warm. We have completed feeding this one, but it doesn't mean that we are going to dig only one pit. Dr. Nagai went on to say that a farmer needs three pits to make compost. So, Daudi, after three weeks, should move on to the second pit and transfer the quarters from the first pit into it. Give it a good mix to aerate the compost. Continue this process, transferring the contents from the second pit to the third pit. Soon enough after the third pit, Daudi will have nutrient-rich compost ready to use on his farm. Thank you very much, Dr. Robina. There's nothing that gives me joy like seeing a problem solved. 
We are back at Johnson's farm and we see that Johnson is really passionate about growing fruit trees on his land. He started with a few trees, but the harvest uh -uh, was not what he expected. However, Johnson is not giving up. He is determined to keep going and he believes that he can grow even more fruit trees on his land successfully. I've asked Dr. Sarah Mutoni from Naro to come and give us some advice on how to manage fruit trees and integrate fruit trees with other enterprises and the countless benefits of agroforestry. First of all, we want to understand the importance of farmers having uh, trees on their farm. Yes. One of the reasons why we are having trees on farm generally, mm. including the fruit trees, is because of the changing climate. The trees help us to absorb carbon dioxide, which is destroying our environment. True. The trees help us to reduce soil erosion. That means uh, reducing on the soil, which is uh, swept away by the running water, mm. making sure that our soils remain fertile for a long time. The trees are a source of food. So when you have trees, you have food. And then um, the other thing is that the trees can give us shed. Uh, for example, we are here in a banana plantation and these bananas require shade. So when you have trees in a banana plantation, then our bananas will take long without getting old. Yeah, and when we flash back to what he has currently, mm. he has fruit trees. So fruit trees are key in that they are a source of income. Uh, for example, I saw mangoes. One mango is at 1,500 in a casero market. And then I also I saw sour soap. It's also a very expensive fruit due to its medicinal purposes. Mm. Going into trees is very key to a farmer's livelihood. Uh, so Johnson, uh, clearly uh, you're into this business, but what is the plan? What is your future plan? I thought of having us mainly on my on my boundaries and some areas where I can cultivate. So for us to plant a uh, house for business purposes, we cannot use uh, this boundary. House needs a lot of space so that it can get enough sunshine and to give you more fruits. So if you plant it together with uh, bananas and other trees, mm. that means you'll not be able to get that yield we are talking about. What should I prepare for the house? for me to be ready to plant hers, and what should I expect? Now, the first thing before you can start to plant hers is to get the right seedlings. And where do you get the right seedlings for planting hers? You can get them from National Agriculture Research Organization, from okay. Mukono Zadi or Nafori. That is where you can get the good seedlings. That's the first thing. Then you need to clear the land, and you need to clear it very well. You plow it, make sure it is clean. Maybe this is the point when we we'll go and look at the, the place where we can do our house. Of course. Yes, let's go then. Thank you. Good thing Karis was there to help fix and plow the land. Yeah. Yes, doctor, so this is it. Okay. Mm. I think this, is, uh, this land is well prepared. Okay. And now we need to go ahead and uh, do the marking of pits. When you're digging the pit, for planting has avocado. Mm. Okay. It should be two feet deep and two feet wide. wide. And when you are digging that pit, the top soil, which is the black soil, put it on the side, the lower side. The one which is brown, which, which we call subsoil, you put it on this upper side. You get one benson of manure, mix it with the black soil and put it back in the hole. Okay, so, so we are finished backfilling our pit. Okay. Now we are going to plant our seedling. But before we plant, it has to be in the center of our pit. So this is the center of our pit. Now the next thing we do is to remove this, this bag. This bag from the seedling. That is where you are going to plant your seedling for her avocado. Okay, after this, we are going to pour water. Johnson, what did you think of that? I think it's a great idea. Mm. It has given me better farming methods mm -hmm. and also 
it's probably going to give me more money in the pocket. Ah, that's great to know. And remember, if you want to improve your farm, you can do it with Aishamba. Come on, what yes. is Aishamba? <laughs> Johnson, Aishamba is a mobile backup system that gives you valuable farming information, tips and advice straight to your phone. Uh, it covers really? topics. Yes, it covers topics like uh, planting techniques, mm. pest control, and even harvest. Come on, how do I join? Uh, yes. It is simple. He wants to join. Remove your phone. Yes. Uh huh. Go to messages. Type S S U. Leave a space. Your name. Leave a space. Location and send it to six one one five. And papa, you've signed up automatically. Really? Yes. And the best part is, it is absolutely. Free to use. Mm. Come on. Yes. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> and that's the spirit. Mm. Remember, with iShamba, you have the power to shape up your shamba. Achieve greater success in your farming journey. See ya! <laughs>